Hey guys, Steve here. So in a previous video, I addressed the topic of occult objects, new age objects in your house, and how that can open up doorways and entry points and portals in your house for demonic entities, for demonic spiritual influence. And that video got over a quarter million views. People are sharing it around like crazy, and it's producing a lot of awesome fruit. But I want to take it one step further in this video. So totally aside from any kind of spiritual influence, there's two other primary reasons coming from scripture that we need to repent of this stuff. And I want to challenge you guys to take one step deeper in your repentance. It could be violent stuff. It could be drug related stuff. Maybe it's just wicked forms of entertainment. For me, it's, it, there was a few things I'll show you in this video. One thing in particular I was kind of on the fence about, and you can't afford to be on the fence about anything as a Christian. It's unbiblical to be, especially when you're in ministry, if you want to be in ministry. So the first reason you're going to want to repent of things, aside from any kind of evil spiritual influence over objects, in addition to that, you're going to want to repent of them for the sake of conscience. Biblically speaking, we're commanded to have a clean conscience, and it even says in Romans 14 that if we're struggling with something, if we aren't doing something out of pure faith, if we aren't fully convinced in our own mind, then that's a sin for us. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Now, it's speaking here pertaining to food, but this principle can carry over to anything. It says, but whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is a sin. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Look what Paul says here in Acts 23. Brothers, I have lived my life before God in all good conscience up to this day. So a major reason we're going to want to repent of this stuff, especially occult, just different forms of religion and spirituality, is for the sake of conscience, so that we can know that we're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Another thing is that we're commanded to put to death the things that we used to be involved with. Jesus says in Luke 9, 62, that no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Paul says in Philippians 3, 13, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Now, when we hold on to things from our past that we're kind of sitting on the fence about, not only does that disturb and stupefy our conscience and pervert our ability to worship God in spirit and in truth, it also ties us in psychologically with the state of mind we used to be operating from when we took part in these fruitless deeds, these fruitless forms of spirituality. So if I walk into a room filled with all of the paraphernalia and all of the imagery that I used to kind of glorify and involve in my spiritual practice, not only is that bad for me, for my spiritual health, it's bad for my psychological health in the sense that I'm going to be pulled into memory, into nostalgia, and into a sort of intoxicated middle ground where because my brain is used to associating these ideas with a particular outcome, I'm in a position where I'm basically tempting the devil to tempt me. Another thing too, guys, is your brain has a property called neuroplasticity, where if you're programmed enough, if you're used to associating a stimuli with a certain response over and over again, your brain gets into a habit of just reacting and responding that way. It's basically a survival mechanism. And so if I have a piece of artwork or a movie that my brain is used to associating with idolatry, or with pantheism, or with mystical experiences, that's not doing good for my brain, for my body, to be constantly in a state where I'm being pulled in to a psychological worldview that contradicts that of the Bible. So we need to repent of these things to give our brain the ability to refresh and be renewed in the word without constantly battling against neuroplasticity and memory and nostalgia and all these things. It bears no good fruit for the kingdom of God. So something I destroyed today is a canvas that I got when I was in the New Age movement, and I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. Obviously, it's very aesthetically pleasing, and, you know, it's a very nice-looking piece of art. Now, what's wrong with something like this? Why do I feel inspired to completely chuck it and destroy it? Well, the first reason is that I know what it's representing. It's representing the union between the quote-unquote divine masculine and the divine feminine, namely that there's apparently two primary types of energy that the universe is built on that flow through the universe. You have the divine masculine. So divine masculine would be like logic, order, rationality, geometry, 
And then you'd have the divine feminine, which would be like intuition, spontaneity, creativity, those kinds of things. And we're supposed to strive for a balance of these two divine energies that are flowing through the universe. And we're supposed to harmonize these two into some kind of union where we're supposed to draw from the divine feminine and we're supposed to learn from them almost as if they are deities. They become deified almost in the sense of being equivalent to what Paul says people do in Romans 1. Even if we grant that the divine feminine and masculine are a part of the creation, which I don't think they are. There's no reason to think they are. But even if they were, to call them divine and to deify them and to kind of learn from them and worship them and adore them, which people do do in the New Age movement, that's idolatry. And it is worshiping the creation and the method of creation rather than the creator himself, who is Yahweh. And so the Bible teaches Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And here's a painting telling me that there's two primary ways God has manifested himself as a masculine energy and as a feminine energy. It's just new age garbage and I want nothing to do with it. So I had fun cutting this up. Going into it, it kind of was like, you know, I could sell this for a lot of money and give it to the poor. That's what Judas said when oil was poured out on the feet of Jesus. In the book of Acts, they burnt something like half a million dollars worth of scrolls. It's not worth it to recycle this into the satanic kingdom to continue to pervert people's understanding of reality or of themselves or of what they should be striving for. Let's just get rid of it, clean our conscience, clean our psychology, give our brain a chance to reset and be renewed in the word of God without having memory and nostalgia and neuroplasticity pulling us back into new age thinking, into new thought. And so I challenge you to take one step further in your repentance to burn things, to throw out things that you've kind of been sitting on the fence about. I know some of you, you already know what that item is. Just throw it out. You'll feel such a release. I feel so much better. And you'll be blessed by God for this. This is what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to look back. He doesn't want us to hold on to these things. Life's too short to just be playing games with our spiritual walk. Yeah, it's going to cost you stuff to follow Christ, but it's worth it and it's what he commands from us. So be blessed. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you guys in the next video.